This is part two to pegboard toy design. In the previous video, we had just finished uh, drawing our uh, square and our triangle and then centering them off of our square. So now I'm going to grab my circle tool. And again, I'm going to draw, roughly draw that circle where I want it. And the circle is one inch. Then I'm going to click on my dimension tool. And there's a few things I know. If I click on the center point of this and the center point of the triangle, I want to be 1.5 inches away. Also, if I want to be in the center, I click on the center point of my circle and the top line. I also want to be 1.5 inches away. What I now have is, according to specifications, where my uh, circles and drawings should be. I'm going to click on my extrude button. I'm just going to angle to gain a little bit of perspective. I don't want to add. What I want to do is I want to remove material. So what we can see is happening now. We're cutting that material instead of adding on additional material. I'm going to hit my green check mark. And we can see now is I have my pegboard base completed. That original extrusion is 0.75 inches thick. And then I have my holes going through. I'm going to come to where it says part one, right click on it, rename, and call this pegboard. The next thing I'm going to want to do is go back to my original document. And I need to create my different pegs for this toy. I have a circle peg, one inch, 3.375 inches extruded, a rectangular toy, which is one by one inch, 3.375 inches extruded. And then I have my triangular prism, which is 1.15, that is 3.375 extruded. I'm going to not hide this this time, and I'm going to orientate myself, and I'm going to come and grab a sketch, and I'm going to lay it down on that top plane. Now, the reason I chose not to hide this is I want to work around this part so I can include all my parts in my workspace without overlapping. So again, I'm going to uh, hit my top to orientate myself. I'm going to grab my circle tool, and I'm going to draw a one inch circle. I'm going to click on my extrude tool, and I'm going to extrude that 3.375 inches. We're going to gain perspective and we can see I've created that part. I'm going to go to where it says part two, right click on it, rename, and I'm just going to simply call this my cylinder. I'm going to do that same procedure. I'm going to grab my sketch tool. I'm going to lay it on that top plane. I'm going to click the top to orientate myself. I'm going to grab my rectangle tool. I'm going to click and drag and I'm going to make a one inch by one inch rectangle or square. I'm going to click on my extrude tool. And just like the previous part, I'm going to extrude a 3.375 green check mark. And we can see that I've completed my second part. I'm going to click on that sketch again, the top plane, clicking on top to orientate myself. I'm going to grab my polygon tool. I'm going to click and drag out, scrolling down to set my sides to three or three sides. And then I'm going to hit my dimension button. I'm going to click on that line. And I'm going to dimension this 1.15. Now I'm able to click on the extrude button. I'm going to extrude this like the previous part, 3.375 green check mark, and then I can orientate myself again. Now I can right click over here, rename my part three to square, and rename my part four by right clicking to triangle. 